Hi, I'm Lawrence from the TensorFlow team. And in this video, we'll continue looking at how to do text classification, continuing from what we learned in part one. We'll be classifying the IMDB dataset to build a model that can infer if a movie review is positive or negative. Up to this point, we've done the pre-processing of the data, getting it into arrays of numeric values that can then be used to train a neural network. But to design a neural network that can learn from this, we have to use something called an embedding. In an embedding, a word is converted into a vector in multidimensional space with the theory that words of similar sentiment will have a sort of similar direction in that space. Now, you might think, wait a second, how does a word get converted into a vector? And what would that look like? Well, let's look at a very simplified example. So say you're a fan of Regency era romances, like those of Jane Austen. Yeah, I know, I know. Take characters from Pride and Prejudice and plot them on a 2D chart where one axis is the gender derived from their title and the other is an estimation of their position in society based on their title. So we'll look at one of my favorites, Mr. Collins. Now, he's obviously a male, and from his title, Mr., he's probably not nobility. So we'll plot him in blue. Now, if we look at Mr. Darcy and we plot him in red, we'll see very similar results. But what if we add Lady Catherine de Bourgh in orange, and we can see that she's a lady from her title as well as nobility. But from these vectors, we already have a bit of an understanding about these characters. Now let's see what happens if I add a third dimension, and that is the perceived richness of these characters, how much money they have. We'll now see that there's a huge difference between Mr. Darcy and Mr. Collins. And this gives us a rough idea for how words, when translated into a vector space, can have sentiment derived from them. You can see that Mr. Darcy has more in common with Lady Catherine than he does with Mr. Collins, despite both of them being referred to as Mr. This process is called embedding, and there are a number of algorithms that can handle this for you. In TensorFlow and Keras, you can use an embedding layer to automatically figure out the right axes for a plot like this and to start sorting your words into vectors like these in order to derive sentiment. That's pretty cool, right? So let's see it in action. Here, you can see how the model is built using Keras. The first layer is an embedded where we're asking it to take the 10,000 words that we have and figure out vectors for them in 16 dimensions. The next line then flattens these into a one-dimensional vector, and this is fed into a dense layer with 16 nodes, as there were 16 dimensions. They then output to a one-node layer, and this has an activation being a sigmoid, and that pulls apart the results into a value between 0 and 1. In our case, 1 is a good review, and 0 is a bad one. Next up, we'll compile the model, giving it an optimizer and a loss function. We'll use a standard Adam optimizer, and as we want only two values, one and zero, as the output, the binary cross entropy is a good way to calculate loss. A common practice is to hold off on testing against your test data if you have a lot of data to work with. So in this case, we have 25,000 training records, so I'm going to take out a portion of them, say about 10,000, to use for testing and validation. So in other words, we'll validate against those until we have a finished training model. Once the model is trained and we're happy with the loss values, we can then test against the test set. And this helps prevent introducing bias into our model. So here, I can create a partial training set of values and labels with the rest of for validation, and I'll train the model with them. In the workbook, you can see it's a 10,000, 15,000 split, but that's really easy to tweak if you want. We'll then train it with the model.fit call, and it's set up to train for 40 epochs, so it will take just a few moments. Once we've trained, we can then evaluate against the test labels. And this shows that we're getting about 87.5% accuracy. It's not bad, it's not great, but it's not bad. The rest of the notebook then details plotting the loss function to see if you're overfitting. I'm just going to step over that for now. And once it's done, I'd like to demonstrate how this would look with a new review. I'm going to add a code block here, and I'm going to create two new reviews. 
The first one will be just a bunch of random words, so the review could be just about anything score-wise. The second one will be filled with a value of 530, which happens to be brilliant, and I'll call this the biased review. I'll evaluate these with model.predict, and now we can see the results. The random one, which was made up of a jumble of random words, scored 0.34, which you'd probably expect. But the one where the review is made up entirely of the word brilliant will, of course, be a positive review, and you can see it scores a perfect one. And that's it. In these videos, you saw how to build a text sentiment classification. You can take all of the steps yourself in the workbook, which is linked in the description below. In the next video in this series, you'll then switch gears, and you'll look at how to do regression in TensorFlow. I'll see you there. Whatever you do, for more videos, don't forget to hit that Subscribe button. Thank you.